Hi everyone, I'm Qing Yi. Um, I go with Emma. I'm a first year PhD student at Duke University. And my topic today is um, enhanced feature segmentation of X-ray macro CT scans of geomaterial using contrastive learning and unit based architectures. Um, just a little bit background on the global carbon problem. Um, just a little bit background on the global carbon problem. Um, as we all know that uh, the heat is increasing, glaciers melting, higher sea level has been reached and constraint on coastal infrastructures. Um, for us engineers, we are thinking of ways to deal with these problems. So us engineers are thinking about doing the carbon capture utilization and storage, also known as CEUS which means we wanted to capture carbon dioxide emissions, store it, and reuse it. So how, before we do this, we wanted to do like a precise and um, uh, accurate core analysis. So we wanted to examine the physical property of rock samples and the, well, this is not constrained to just rock samples, it's for other geomaterials as well, but the only uh, reason that we, I put rock here is because we're, our lab is currently only look at rock samples and it's easy to get and also easy to run on our model. And also we want to get porosity, permeability, and mineral composition assessment through the core analysis. But how do we do that? So our research aim is to develop a machine learning models for pore segmentation which help us to minimize human bias. Well, the reason that we want to minimize human bias because nowadays when we do like poor segmentations, we basically just do like manually picking out or just run like random algorithm that was not specific for a certain materials. So we want to minimize that and make it more accurate for us to do the core analysis. So we have this macro city machine. Um, it's a robust method nowadays to quantify various features in process, process geomaterials. So we are currently using Portland cement based materials and also other geological materials. But for the research we have now, it's only for the sandstones. This is a CT scan we have. It's from Tascan. Um, it's called Unitom XL. It's a huge CT scan. You can put like a, a, like a 10 feet tall core inside of the scan, like mount straight and then just scan it through. How does macro CT scan work? So we have the source and our detector, and then we have the object plane in the middle. The object plane rotates when um, when it starts like doing the scans. So the X the X ray source is spread out the photon and it goes through the object, and then it will give us the X ray radiograph. And then later on, we could get the each slice for the CT scans, and then we do segmentation based on that. This, just a, this is just a representation, and we do cores using the machine. So about our basic model, so what is UNET? UNET was a, was a convolution neural network specifically designed for image segmentation. It was first used in magical, medical images, and because our cores, port, especially the pores, were similar to some of the medical scan, and also work well, and there are a lot of published paper on how UNET and UNET++ has been used in core analysis, and also like for other geomaterials as well. So this is like a easy representation of how UNET is. It's like a U-shaped, network. So we have the con contracting pass, which um, we can call it like the encoder to capture the context. Like it captures um, the features that we want to segment out. So it's normally labeled. And then after it learn itself, it will give us the decode. It will print out the decoder, which is like the segmented results. So about our data acquisition, um, in Duke University, we are doing the Central Campus Geothermal Task Project. Um, this project is um, initially for finding geothermal resources on campus because we wanted to make Duke like a low carbon university. And then we wanted to find geothermal um, resources to help us cool down the university throughout the summer and also heat us during the winter. This is a field wheel that how we drill the little holes and then get out of the course. This is a box of cord. It's like a 10 feet tall course. And we're studying this box for our ongoing research. This is, the, this is how we mount the sample inside of the machine. 
this is the source, and then we have the sample mounting. This is one of the cores that we mounted, and then we can get it through the detector and print it out from the, our computer. These are the slices that we have from the core X-ray scans. So this is um, one of the 10 feet tall. The first one is from the first core from the first row, and the second one was like maybe like in the middle. It's like a five feet ish. And then the last part was like the second, the last scan that we got from the last quarter from that box. Okay, before we put everything into the machine learning model, we want to do a little bit labeling. So the reason why we do this because we have we have to generate a mask, and this mask can be used like isolating a specific area or the object, and within an image. And the object that we're labeling is, is actually the target that we wanted to segment out. So basically, we're teaching the model, like, oh, this is a port, and we want you to learn on this and to give us like more accurate results on, the, on, on our data set. And these two images shows the original image and also the cor its corresponding mask. So we can see we basically label everything from the original image that is considered pores. And the thing under the little red box is like the two, like the two examples for the pores that we pick out for labeling. And um, so we talk about foam cement because it's a uh, cellular concrete, it's lightweight, and then it's made by mixing cement slurry with a foam agent. And then you're really using the oil and gas industry, and it's filled with nitrogen bubbles. The reason we bought this up and we want to put this in our data set because it's very porous. Like there are a lot of pores and it's huge in size. So we can use this to evaluate our model, whether the model has picked out the pores accurately or not. So our proposed model is uh, we have our input data, which is our X-ray CT scans. And then our first step is we ran it through a convolution neural network. And now we're using con contrastive learning model. And then the second step, we feed whatever the feature that we learned from the contrastive learning to the UNAP model. So instead of using the UNAP model itself, and as I talked about, because the UNAP model was initially built for the medical image segmentations. So we wanted to see the contrastive learning will help us to enhance the segmentation from the unit to help us get more accurate poor segmentations. So how contrastive learning works, so we have our input image, the original image, and then we have our all the labeled um, mask, and then we just well, like randomly select two masks, and then we consider one is a negative mask, and the other one that we select is the specific corresponding mask to the input data of the into input image. And then we run it through the contrastive learning. It will learn on how much, how much the similarity it is from the input image and the corresponding mask. And then it will also tell, give us more information on how close that the pore was supposed to be at and how the difference between the corresponding and the negative mask and how much data that we can be put into the UNAM model. So this is the overview of our, like the whole model that we built. So we have the raw input data, and then we have both the contrastive learning data, which is like one input image and two masks. One is its corresponding mask, and the other one was the negative mask with not relation to the original mask. And then we do this augmentation, basically just randomly shift a uh, set <coughs> to like 90 degrees, just help, better help the model better understand the data set. We run through the contrastive learning, and then we feed it to the UNAM model. So Instead of using the UNA itself, the encoder just get whatever the contrast learning has feed them about the feature extraction. And then we learn on that, and then we print it out and get our predicted results. We're using traditional machine learning um, criteria to evaluate our model. We're using the precession and F1 scores. Um, this, this Y axis is from 0 0.0 to 1. So because we want to see the difference that how our model has like enhanced the original UNAM model. We compare our model with the UNAM model. Well, the higher precession and higher F1 score is, it means that we got more accurate poor segmentations. So our precession raised like about 0 0.08 and the F1 score raised like a 0 0.02. This is the segmentation results. 
Um, the first row shows the core data set that we got from the CCGT um, scanning. And then the second row is the open data set on the digital rocks. It's a foam cement um, X-ray scans. Um, the reason that we see the foam cement, it'll, it's a little bit o like over segmented is because the resolution on the foam cement is um, a little bit, it's way lower than the CT scan that we get. And then it kind of, because it's a little bit flurry, so the, and also the data set is not in, insufficient. So when the model learns on itself, it might have like over predicted a little bit, but it can be improved. So our conclusion is that um, contrastive learning has improved the segmentation result of the original unit model. Um, and it shows like promising potentials like how we can use machine learning model to help us better understand the core, cores and help us do more accurate core analysis. And it also shows potential like how different machine learning models can be used in the field. And also it helped us to remove the human bias. It's like not like, well, at least so far, it's not like definitely removed, it's like minimized. And then it will lead us to like a more accurate and reliable data interpretation. So our next step is that um, we want to do like a 3D visualization. So it will give us like a better understanding of the spatial relationship inside of the core. And also we want to do porosity calculation. So we calculate the porosity of the core sample use our enhanced segmented results. And then based on that, we can get more insight into the permeability and the potential for carbon storage and also for the geothermal, geothermal project that we have on campus. And also we are thinking about multi-phase segmentation, like if there is like water inside of the cores or like other materials or like other things, we can also use machine learning models to help us to segment that out. And thank you to our group and also the project going on, on our campus. And this is my lab and they, also, they are also here today. <laughs> um, I would like to take any questions.